Okay, so this is rules of exponents part two. Um, and so the first thing I'll do, product rule, and that's if you multiply the variables with exponents, you add the same variable with different exponents, you add the exponents. Quotient rule, or the better way, if you watch my part one video, um, you cross, cross out um, ones in there, and that's usually power to power, if you have x to some power to another power, you would multiply the two exponents, and three major ones. Now the rest of them are kind of all derived off of these first three. And so we'll talk about two. So we'll talk about the next one, which is product to power. Product to power is pretty simple, um, if you understand the first three. So let's say we had two x to the third y and then to the fourth power. Okay. Well, um, this is the product to power means a product means multiplication. So these are all products, which you can see there by the multiplication, and then they're to a power, which is uh, the four there. So what you do is you just apply the power to everything in the product, and basically it's because of our parentheses here. So we'd have 2 to the 4th power, we know that is 16, and then power to power rule, x to the 3rd to the 4th power is x to the 12th, and uh, there's a 1 there, would be y to the 1st times 4th, or y to the 4th power. And so that's the product of power rule. And, uh, you know, generally, if you have, it could be stated something like this x to the m, y to the n, all to the z power would equal x to the mz times y to the m, uh, nz, excuse me, times y to the nz, if you can read my writing. And so that's product to power. Just remember um, the difference. Now if you had, say, 2 and then uh, parenthesis x to the fourth to the third power. In this case, the parentheses don't go around the two, so the three doesn't go to the two at all. So the answer to this would be two x to the twelfth. And so that's uh, product to power. Quotient to power is very similar. So quotient to power is the same but with division. So let's say you had two um, x to the fifth over 3y to the third, and all to the second power. All right. Well, quotient to power, quotient means the answer to a division problem. And so quotient, in this case, uh, we're going to take the power to everything inside the parentheses. Well, we know uh, 2 squared is 4. x to the fifth to the second, that, that's power to power. That's going to be x to the tenth over um, 3 to the second is 9, and then y to the third, third power to the second power, again, power to power rule, and that's y to the sixth. And so that's the quotient power, quotient to a power rule. It's not really a rule in my book, but uh, I'll go with what the textbooks want us to talk about. But it does, it, it, it's a good point to, to push forward, uh, because you want that power to go to everything inside the parentheses. It applies to everything in there. Okay, the much more interesting of the of the rules is the negative exponent. And what do we do with negative exponents? So the best way to kind of think about a negative exponent, whoops, best thing to do when we're talking about negative exponents is maybe to start with a numeric example. Like if, if we had um, 5 to the 3rd, for instance, that's 125. 5 to the 2nd, 25. 5 to the 1st, 5. Notice as we work our way down, the pattern is divide by 5 in each case. 125 divided by 5 gives you 25. 25 divided by 5 gives you 5. So if we continue this pattern down and, um, and go one more, so 
now we want 5 to the 0. Well, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Okay, if we keep going down, now the next exponent down is a negative exponent. Well, it's the same thing. We're going to divide by 5. So that would be 1 fifth. Okay, if you wanted to keep going, 5 to the negative 2. Again, that moves down. We're going to divide by 5 again. That's 1 over 25. And you could keep going in this manner. So negative exponents essentially reciprocate the variable or whatever the base number is. So let's say you had x to the negative m power. Okay. Well, that is 1 over x to the positive m power. So it reciprocates in that way. All right. So let me give you an example of this. That, kind of a complicated example, but it, it'll help you see um, more what the negative exponents do. So let's say I had something crazy like this. 2x to the negative third, y to the fourth over 3z to the negative second, y to the negative second. Okay, something just absolutely insane there. Okay, with the negative exponents, so whenever you see negative exponents, you, to have a simplified expression, you have to get rid of them. You can't have them. So x to the negative third here, for instance, we're going to reciprocate that. It's going to go down. Same with z to the negative second. That's going to reciprocate up. And y to the negative second is also going to reciprocate up. Everything else is going to stay exactly like it is. So I'm going to just recopy it with the things move, with the variables moved. So we'd have 2. It didn't move. The, the negative 3 only goes with the x. But the z squared came up. So it would be z to the positive 2. y to the fourth stays where it's at. But we'd also have a y to the second power because this bottom y to the second moved up. On the bottom, we still have the 3. The negative 2, the negative two here does not go with the 3, so it stays where it's at. But we had an x to the third come down. And now we have everything in positive exponents. So the last thing to do is apply the product rule, which is right there, y to the fourth times y to the second. And so you would have 2z to the second, y to the sixth, because you'd add your exponents, over 3x to the third. And that's essentially a negative exponent. And back to um, a simpler example. One more here. So let's say you had just 2x to the negative second power. Okay. Or any number. I'm picking 2 a lot. Maybe we'll pick 5. So 5 times x to the negative 2. Okay, that negative 2 does not go with the 5. It only goes with the x. So you only reciprocate the x. So the answer to this would be 5, or the simplified expression would be 5 over x to the positive 2 power. Okay, what gets crazy is when you start putting negative exponents with um, all, the other, all the other things, uh, the quotient to a power rule and the product to a power rule, then things get kind of messy. The last thing we're going to talk about in this part 2 video is zero exponents. These are the, the funnest, funnest there are. The funnest things we'll deal with, I think, in terms of rules of exponents. Um, if you go back, we already kind of touched on it. Notice here, 5 to the 0 is equal to 1. Well, that, that, is the, that is the case for all zero exponents. The rule for zero exponent is anything to the 0 power is 1. We can prove that pretty quickly. Let's say you had x to the 3rd divided by x to the 3rd. Okay, well, I know just by crossing out, you know, we'd have, if you follow the rules of exponents, we have 3x's over 3x's. Well, x divided by x is 1, x divided by x is 1, x divided by x is 1. So we know the answer is 1. But we also could use rule 2, which is a quotient rule, which this is also 
you subtract your exponent, x to the 3 minus 3. Well, we know that is x to the 0. So anything to the 0 power is 1. So I, I kind of went in a circle there. I apologize. But uh, that's a kind of a quick proof of, zero, of the 0 exponent rule. And not a very good proof, but it, it kind of gives you an idea of what it is. So now it doesn't matter. You, you know, if you had some crazy thing like 3z to the 5th, y to the ninth, all to the 0 power, that is just 1. Because all of this, the 0 power goes with everything in here because of the product to power rule. And so you have 3 to the 0, z to the 0, y to the 0, because 5 times 0 is 5 times 0 is 0, 9 times 0 is 0. This is 3 to the first power, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0. And so you have this, which all of those are 1. And so that's, that's the second part of rules of exponents. And for a majority of us, all we're going to deal, deal with in our lives in terms of that type of exponent or math lives, I should say, or math careers. But if you want to get into the applications of exponents and what, what we do in real life every day with finance and things like that and biology and, and all the fun science and, and uh, banking, banking uh, things that deal with mathematics, you're going to have to understand part three, which is uh, the rational exponent. So... Good luck. I hope this helps, and uh, I'll see you in part three.